Hey there and happy Tuesday. It's a gorgeous day here in Southwest Minnesota and maybe a little bit windy, but I'm still excited to finish my video and either take a walk or just sit outside with a book and soak in some vitamin D. So looks like my iPad's caught up and so I'm going to set that down here a second and show you the card that I'm making for uh, stamp virtual stamp camp for March card number six. So um, my goal was to keep bringing in all sorts of new stamp sets that I haven't used before. And so you might go, but Belle, I know you've used the Hey uh, Birthday Chick stamp set, so that's nothing new. But some of you might not have noticed because it's an annual catalog. And I think sometimes when Celebration comes along or a mini catalog comes along, uh, sometimes we forget about the things um, that are still amazing, were amazing, or might be a brand new thing that is amazing from the annual catalog. And that is the fun, all wired up background chicken wire uh, stamp. So um, I want to show you that today because it pairs so well with all of the new chick uh, accessories and stamp sets and everything coming out. Hi there, uh, Lois and hi, Carol. Good to have you guys on here. So let me get my camera turned around so that I can start <clears throat> designing the card for you today. Um, I felt like I was a little bit putsy, but I, I feel like when it comes together, it won't be a, so bad. I just needed to get the right measurements and spacing out for everything to make it work out okay um, and such. So here is the card facing you guys. Let me get my light here a little bit better. There we go. So I'm using a basic gray, real red um, as my kind of two colors and just poke, pull, ugh, pulling in a little bit of smoky slate there. Sorry, guys. Um, so where these things are coming from, um, the Hey Birthday Chick, that is coming from the mini catalog, and that is from page 52. So there's a couple uh, chick stamp sets out there, but this is the Hey Birthday Chick from page 52. So I'm going to use the uh, chicken with the balloon tied to it there. Hi there, Lisa. And then let me set that down. If you're looking for the dies that I'm using today, um, let's see. So there is a Hey Chick and dies, and then there's Hey Birthday Chick, which I'm using today, and then I'm using the dies that coordinate. And I really worked hard to get um, the dies I'm using to be with this. So if you guys have the Hey Birthday Chick bundle and got the dies, all the dies that I need to make the card are from this. Um, sometimes I go back and forth, but they're all from here. And uh, Lisa, yes, I love this. I could do a whole month on how I love how gray pairs up with so many colors so well. Today is no exception when I use uh, both of the two of my favorite grays with red. I love how that pops. Um, and then because I'm bringing in this new uh, stamp all wired up, I want to show you where that's at because you might think, well, they should put that with the chicken things, but they didn't. It's in the annual catalog, and that is on page 138 right here, all wired up. So what they do is kind of show a miniature version of the whole stamp, which is a card front size or a little bit bigger, so it does fit onto your card size. And then they put a um, close up of what the image looks like there. So that is in the annual catalog. So I'm excited to get that. Um, it's not one of those that I had sitting around for too long. All of a sudden I went, where are all these fun ideas coming from where people are using this chicken wire background and not really paying too much attention, like I said, until we got the fun chicks, and then there it is. Okay, so then um, the fun um, designer series paper here is from the um, all, yep, nope, I was going to say all dressed up. It's from the well-suited designer series paper. So the well-suited, if you remember a masculine Valentine card that I did um, back in January to kind of go along with that whole love theme and such, that came from here. So you might recognize this. Um, hi there, Kay. Hi there, Linda. So a lot of these masculine papers can double up for some really fun things. I might do something with this tomorrow, the 
way it was intended. So when you see all these masculine um, colors here, and then flip it over, and like I said, just some great ideas for masculine cards and go, oh, look at this one right here. So if you're not wild about this for maybe the guy, um, guy card or guy look that it's intended for, I'm going to use this side. I actually do like this, but I'm going to use this side for today's cards. So um, that, uh, all of this is uh, found in the well-suited uh, suite of products in the mini catalog. So that's where that's coming from. And so let me think of how I want to start my card today. I think what I'm going to do is um, stamp out my chicken here. So we have um, this nice big block here so that it can fit the chicken with the balloon. And I love that the balloon is actually tied to the chicken because how many times do we kind of have to make those uh, balloons attached to whatever project we're working on, either with string or with marker. And a lot of people just aren't um, comfortable with that. So I love that the image um, imagery on the stamp actually has it all attached um, and it makes it maybe be, be on a bigger block, but I'd rather have that than sometimes try and attach that or figure out how to do that on my own. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for joining in. So for this, um, I'm just going to, since it's a larger stamp, I'm going to set that down on my workspace and then just kind of tap or twist my Memento Black ink pad onto that image there like so and just stamp that out like that. There we go. And there we have the chicken. Actually, I don't like that. Every once in a while, I get a little bit of the black ink on there like so. I might actually just do it on the back side and not press so hard into the balloon. For you guys, I always want to make sure I'm pressing hard, getting a good image, but that can backfire. Sometimes I take my scissor and or an exacto knife and actually cut out that center so that there's no way it can get any ink on there. So let me do this over. The Joy of Facebook Live is showing you that I don't do everything perfect the first time. There, I like that better. Everything is still crisp and clear with the black ink, but nothing in the balloon that I have to color over. Hi there, Lisa. Hi, Jane. Okay, so I have that and I'm going to do some other die cutting. So I'm going to set that aside um, until I do that. So here is that fun chicken wire background. I had a stressful time putting on this huge sticker. I thought it was going well. I put half of it on and then when I went to push kind of the second half up, I got this big wrinkle. So sometimes I will actually keep my... Um, my cling stamps, which are super sticky, right in the case. But today I put it on my big acrylic block because I feel like it wanted to kind of um, bow up a little bit because of how I put the sticker on. And this way it'll stick really nice and flat onto this big acrylic block. So because this stamp is also very large, I'm just going to flop that over on its back and put a nice coating of my black ink on with my Memento black uh, um, ink pad here. Hi there, Julie. Good to see you on here today. Okay, I'm tapping lots and such because I want to make sure I get a good coverage. So then I'm just going to take some um, real red cut four by five and a quarter and just lay that on top. And so that I don't press and get um, ink all over my fingers, I'm just bringing in another plain acrylic block. I think this is my block C and basically any block will do. So that way if there's any ink that gets on the block, it just smears and absorbs into the cardstock right away, which then I might get some black ink on the backside, but nobody's gonna see that black backside of it. And look how nice and crisp then that gives you for a background because um, you're able to push that ink right into that. So that turns out so wonderful, love that. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, and then today I have a couple techniques to show you um, that I think make life so much more grand. So if I think it's great, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to make this be a banner. So for those of you just joining in, some more of you hopped on like Ginger. Hello there. Um, I'm going to show you how I did this big banner cut nice and easy. Um, I could trust my eyes to do that, but... 
when I have my trimmer usually right near my workstation, then it's like, why not use it? So this is cut three by four. So the great news about this measurement is you'll get a lot of these uh, pieces. Is it 12 then or 16, 12? <laughs> my math, I'm not even thinking. Um, you'll get, put it this way, the perfect amount with zero scraps when you cut it three by four. So knowing it's three across, I'm going to go to my one and a half here. And then with my cutting, I'm just going to kind of go just so far in and then give it a slice. So like I said, I could eye that with my scissor and give that a perfect slice, but why do that when you can just do this? So then as I look for where that center is, I just go from this corner here with my scissor and cut up towards that at an angle like so. And then the same thing with this way um, from that corner going straight up like so. So then we have a really nice even banner there. So that works out really well. Got that much going for my card already. I've got the card base, which is a uh, basic gray folded this way today, guys. Um, and then like the like I said, the red four by five and a quarter, and then this is three by four with a hand cut banner that way. Um, and then next, I want to show you my other um, wonderful accessory or adhesive from the annual catalog. And this is, let me show you how it comes. These are the adhesive sheets and they are found in the back of the annual catalog on the um, page with all the adhesives, uh, the item number, because a lot of you are just like, give me the item number, 152334. And so these come this size. And what I usually do then, you can see this one is a little bit shorter. Um, so for today, I cut a strip off of here that is about, oh, just less than an inch. And then what I do is I take it's um, divided there so you can see. I just take and peel that off. Now this part is sticky here, so I'm going to put this on my piece of red cardstock that is about an inch here, and that's what I'm going to put my happy birthday on with. And because I know I'm going to make several of these cards because of the number of people that have already requested my cards for the month, I'm just gonna go to right away just in case my happy birthday die that I'm going to use overlaps. So I still have a strip left and then this is just um, that waxy paper that stickers have. So the adhesive sheets are wonderful and I will set that aside because I'm going to do some other die cutting first, but I am ready to die cut. Um, and like I said, these are coming from the birthday chick dies all of it so there's lots of fun dies in there i almost put this fun little banner on see this little banner die but it just made like it too much for the card like it didn't need that it actually you know like that whole less is more um more was less <laughs> um so you've seen me use the fence before here and there's just so many other cute uh dies in there but what i'm using today is the die that cuts out the chicken here with the big balloon. So let me put that through. Oh, and I've got a little bit of stickiness. I can tell on my finger from the adhesive sheet. I must have just got an ed, edge caught on my finger. There we go. There we go. So about the time I think I have it lined up, then it wants to move as it sticks to my finger. There we go. There. Got it. Okay, so let me run that through quick. And the other fun thing about this die is that it has a nice um, line that connects your chicken to your balloon. So you don't have to worry about, okay, how is that going to work? The die cuts out both of them. So I love that. And then I'm going to set that aside. And this little piece of smoky slate, um, gray cardstock here. I just had a little tiny piece and that's going to give me a fun and cute little seed bag. Um, and I love like that little accessory. There it went flying. So how fun is this for a little accent piece, a little uh, feed bag for the chickens. So let me set that aside and that. And now this is where I have to think, okay, um, I'm going to eventually pull this off and it's going to be sticky there. So I'm going to put my die on the side. 
that's sometimes the easiest way instead of describing you know to you guys put it on the back side there because now that I put this happy birthday through the happy birthday die I've used before for you guys in making multiples of cards. And after I did it, I thought, why did I not use my adhesive sheets for that? Because um, it's just so slick when you use the adhesive sheets. So then this basically is now a sticker, which I will peel off in a little bit. Um, let me just get my pokey tool out here, that take your pick tool and get rid of all those little pieces, kind of for now, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much until I get it ready to put on the card. And it's one of the last things that I'm going to put um, on my card. Okay, so I'm done with my die cutting and now kind of almost ready for assembly, but let me uh, color my chick. And for you guys, I always zoom in to color my chick so you can see exactly how and what I'm using to color. And I'm gonna grab my glasses here too so I don't go out of the lines. So I am using my Real Red Blends, Stampin' Blends, and with the darkest of the Real Red, I'm just going to outline my balloon and kind of come down here a little bit wider because the artist put some little black hash marks here on the balloon. So I'm just going to go across that, like so with my dark red, and then fill in the little balloon stem there a little bit more and that's um all for now and then with my lighter of the two blends in the real red just gonna take some of that color I always try and go up to the dark real red oh this is starting to go dry I always make sure that I have two sets of every color seriously because there's nothing more serious than this like right now like if I need more real red. Um, huh. Wonder if I have it sitting there. Nope, I'm just gonna set it here for a second and let it rejuvenate. I've done that and it works. <laughs> like I said, there's nothing better than live. So I'm going to go back with my uh, darker real red here and just fill in the comb of the chicken and then go back to my light real red and I bet just sitting it on its cap for a second will allow me to finish that balloon. There we go. So, and I um, sometimes feel like, okay, that's gonna give it more scribble scratches, but actually um, it'll be okay. So um, that as it dries will fill in. So got that with the red and then with my dark daffodil yellow, what I'm going to do is just fill in these funky cute little chicken feet here. Um, and the chicken feet don't have to be yellow. They can be all sorts of different colors, oranges or different colors and shades of yellow, but I like the brightness of the daffodil with today's chicken. And then um, I'm going to use Smoky Slate too, the, both the dark and the light. And this is the dark. I'm just gonna kind of go around where that balloon gets tied onto the chicken and then the outline. And there's a lot of um, artistry marks on here too. Lots of little details with feathers. So I'm not gonna go over top all of those because it almost kind of adds its own darkening effect on its own. Just gonna kind of trace over um, as I trace the head of this chicken and the bright yellow beak. It kind of almost made it start to look like an eagle until it got the rest of it um, colored in with my light blend. So I've got that. I'm just gonna trace the outline edge here with my darker of my blends there. Cap that and then I'm ready to do some light smoky slate. And that I'm just going to fill in the rest of the stamped area. And these are blends, so I sometimes have to watch it around like that red comb um, that I don't go too close because it will want to pick up that red. That's the whole point is wanting to pick up the color next to it. So I want to make sure I don't pick up the red and make that blend along with the gray because that's what makes the red look really sharp is just to be left all on its own like that. I'm just going to go around that, fill in. Fill in around there. I also want to make sure that I don't get 
too close to the nice bright yellow beak of the chicken too. So that did not take too long. So we've got the chick all colored in with the blends, just using a few colors. Hi there, Ginger. And Ginger is going to have a party coming up, so I'll give you more details about that at the end. So now I think I'm ready to do my assembly here. So I'm just going to pop up my camera a little bit just so you can see a bigger angle. And I'll just take and put my seal adhesive on the back here of this and adhere it to my basic gray card base. And then before I put this on, I um, originally just, you know, thought, okay, put the banner closer to the top. But then when I put my chicken on, I didn't want to cover up the cut of the banner, but then it kind of um, went off my card. I didn't like that. So I thought, well, let's just put all these dimensionals whoops, um, on the chicken first and adhere it to um, the banner and then put the banner on so that... Um, seem to kind of be the best. So I'm putting a dimensional on the balloon. Kind of looks odd to have another chicken on the back side, but that's because that's what happens when there's two sides of cardstock, right? <laughs> okay, so this I'm just going to settle into the corner there like that, and then um, just leave that for now. And then I can put my adhesive, uh, my seal adhesive, on the rest of it. And I just kind of follow the curve of what I have um, cut out there. And then I know that's going to be close to the top, like so. And I still want to center it from each side. So now I feel confident like it's all going to fit. So that works out great. Um, and yes, Kay is smart because that's my second time making it. <laughs> the first time I was like, oh, I had to do some adjusting. Okay, and then for my cute little feed sack here, I'm just going to pop that up with one little dimensional there and just kind of put that at, at an angle next to my chicken like so. And now I'm going to bring back that happy birthday that I ran through on my adhesive sheets. And so as I pull this off, this now is completely sticky, so I don't have to worry about cutting glue dots in half or what's going to show and that kind of thing. So this will stick so perfectly. Oops, there's my take your pick tool. Looks like there's just one little inside of my letter there that I want to poke out. So I know I want that right there. So as I put it down, nice sticky adhesive for that. So this works for anything, these adhesive sheets, anything that's small, delicate, that you just um, want to stick down really easily and have a good stick that sometimes like the little adhesives that we have just get too ooey gooey on there. So that works out great. And then for the inside, um, I just want to follow through with the whole chicken theme. And so from the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set, you're still a spring chicken. I like that. So I'm going to pull over my black ink pad again. And I'm going to stamp that out at the top. And I thought, okay, that looks a little just plain. So I'm going to take my chicken stamp back over here. And I'm just going to kind of ink up the top balloon and the string a little bit and then position that down here so none of the chicks going to be on it but I'm just going to follow through with that balloon just to add a little bit there to that so it's the same balloon so if you want to go ahead and color it in I'm going to leave it blank just because it's the inside but then I'll just uh, take and put some adhesive on the back and um, earlier in my stamp camp, my March stamp camp cards, I did a card that had a lot of different dies and such. And I kind of felt like, let's just leave that um, embellishment free or accessory free. And I'm going to do that with this card too today. So here's the outside and just kind of let the extra pieces of accessories from the dies made with cardstock do all the funness of it. And I think like the reds, um, uh, really make everything pop together. Everywhere there's red, it just kind of pops together. And even that little bit of yellow from the beak and the um, feet really add a nice pop of color too. And then with the inside following through, that works out really well there together. So that's today's card number six for March Stamp Camp. 
let me get my camera moved around so if you guys are interested in getting my lot of 10 cards that i'm making for march stamp camp just contact me let me know and uh the set of 10 cards is 22 dollars on its own but if you have a wish list that's growing and uh you want to uh place an order for 75 dollars just use the march host code that is on my piece of paper that i my workstation there or when i post this card now onto this page then you will also see that um that host code as along with the details of how you can get the stamp camp cards for this month thank you Kay. i love sharing with you guys and i have some exciting news ginger popped on here and ginger anderson will be my next virtual hostess so um kind of thinking through some things i know stampin up will soon be releasing the retiring list so i kind of thought oh let's maybe um have like uh, March stamp camp and do all 10 cards um, maybe take a break maybe not depending on what Stampin Up gives us for news of when that list might be released and given out to us but then um, I will be doing Ginger's three demo cards for her virtual party after that the good news is if you already have a list and you know Ginger maybe she's invited you to her virtual event or you just like getting extra cards um, her host code is already up and active so all of my host codes um, can always be found on my website on my calendar so Ginger's code is there and then on this page the first topped pin post will have the butterfly uh, brilliance bouquet and so if you scroll down through that um, and that post stays uh, pinned to the top of the page this whole entire month so if anybody else jumps in to be a hostess then um, all of that host information there's a shopping link right there so you click on the shopping link for Ginger and then that takes you right to my web page where you can add in whatever you want and then uh, Ginger gets the credit that way and uh, so right now Ginger's my only virtual hostess and then underneath that are um, is the shopping link for also the March stamp camp too um, there's something else yeah so if anybody else is interested that's where I add it so you'll always be um, included um, right where everybody looks and so I'm trying to train everybody to look right there because uh, it's easy to to shop that way I thought there was one more thing about that um, uh, maybe not uh, so yeah so then oh yeah and then the three cards that I that's what I want to tell you so then when I do Ginger's three days of three projects for her virtual party anybody who orders using her card um, or excuse me her code will get the three cards from me that way as a thank you from both her and I um, so that works out really well and easy and then your order ships directly to you and if that seems like something that you're not comfortable with don't want to go online to order just contact me I place tons of orders for lots of people um, just because it's the easiest thing for everyone if I do it and I have no problem with that stamping up my full-time gig so I'm um, helping you guys um, have the most success whether it's just even placing the order to get it to you easily I have no problem with that so have a great day guys if you live around close to me try and get outside and enjoy some sunshine I know that's what I'm going to do after I post today's card see you tomorrow with card number seven for March's virtual stamp camp bye bye